Jai Radha Madhava Kuntabi Hade Radha Madhava Kuntabi Hade Abhijanava Lapa Girivara Dari Abhijanava Lapa Girivara Dari Shodanandana Braja Janna Ranjana Yashodanandana Braja Janna Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna te avanachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hare It's divine grace, Ace of Bhaktivedanta Swami, Shiva Prabhupada, Ki Jai, Gritraj, Shimad Bhagavatam, Ki Jai, all glories to the Summa Devotees, Hare Krishna, 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 all glories to the Summa Sorry, I just I forgot something. I have to grab something. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4. Chapter 18, uh, Maharaj Prithu milks the earth, and we're on chapter, uh, text 1, so 4, 18, 1. Maitreya Vacha, 
Itam pritum abhishtu ya. Rusha praspuritadaram. Punor aha vanir pita. Samstupyatmanam atmana. Maitevacha. Itam pritum abhishtu ya. Usha prasporitadaram Punor ahava nirbita Samstupyatma nam atmana Atrevacha Itam pratum abishtuya Usha prasporitadaram nor ahava near beta. Some spyat matnam atmana. I tell you, Vacha. The temperatum vishtuya. Usha prasperita the rum. Nor ahava near beta. Some spyat matnam atmana. Word by word translation. Maitreya Vacha. The great saint Maitreya continued to speak. Itam thus. Pratum unto King Pratu. Abhishtuya. After offering prayers. Rusha in anger. Prasparita. Trembling. Adaram. His lips, punaha, again, aha, she said, vanihi, the planet Earth, pita, in fear, samstabya, after settling, atmanam, the mind, atmana, by the intelligence. Translation. The great sa Saint Maitreya continued to address Vidura. My dear Vidura, at that time, after the planet Earth finished her prayers, King Prithu was still not pacified, and his lips trembled in great anger. Although the planet Earth was frightened, she made up her mind and began to speak as follows in order con to convince the king. My dear Lord, please pacify your anger completely and hear patiently whatever I submit before you. Please turn your kind attention to this. I may be very poor, but a learned man takes the essence of knowledge from all places, just as a bumblebee collects honey from each and every flower. To benefit all human society, not only in this life, but in the next, the great seers and sages have prescribed various methods conducive to the prosperity of the people in general. Purport.
Vedic civilization takes advantage of the perfect knowledge presented in the Vedas and presented by great sages and Brahmins for the benefit of human society. Vedic injunctions are known as Shruti, and the additional supplementary presentations of these principles, as given by the great sages, are known as Smriti. They follow the principles of Vedic instruction. Human society should take advantage of the instructions from both Shruti and Smriti. If one wants to advance in spiritual life, he he must take these instructions and follow the principles. In Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Srila Rupa Goswami says that if one poses himself as advanced in spiritual life, but does not refer to the Shrutis and Smritis, he is simply a disturbance in society. One should follow the principles laid down in the Shrutis and Smritis not only in one's spiritual life, but in material life as well. As far as human society is concerned, it should follow the Manu Smriti as well, for these laws are given by Manu, the father of mankind. In the Manusmriti, it is stated that a woman should not be given independence, but should be given protection by her father, husband, and elderly sons. In all circumstances, a woman should remain dependent upon some guardian. Presently, women are given full independence like men, but actually we can see that such independent women are no happier than those women who are placed under guardians. If people follow the injunctions given by the great sages, Shrutis and Smritis, they can actually be happy in both this life and the next. Unfortunately, rascals are manufacturing so many ways and means to be happy. Everyone is inventing some, so many methods. Consequently, human society has lost the standard ways of life, both materially and spiritually. And there was, as a result, people are bewildered. And there is no peace or happiness in the world. Although they are trying to solve the problems of human society, in the, in the United Nations, they are still baffled. Because they do not follow the liberate instructions of the Vedas, they are unhappy. Two significant words used in this verse are asmin and anushmin. Asmin means in this life, and anushmin means in the next life. Fortunately, in this age, even exalted professors and learned men believe that there is no next life and that everything is finished in this life. Since they are rascals and fools, what advice can they give? Still, they're passing as learned scholars and professors. In this verse, the word anushman is very explicit. It is the duty of everyone to mold his life in such a way that he will have a profitable next life. Just as a boy is educated in order to become happy, and later one should be educated in this life in order to attain an eternal and prosperous life after death. It is therefore essential that people follow what is given in the Shrutis and Smritis to make sure that the human mission is successful. Oh my God, Devadanda Sagan, Jana Shaka, Yachak Shogan, Mazamain at the Smashi, Gravain, Maha, Makam, Kadiracha, and Pungam Nangay, take it in the Kripa to Maham Bande, Shugurun, did it out of Van Shaka, but the Bishta, Kripa Sinabe, which are put it in number of an Abbey of Vaishnavi, Bilmaha. She Krishna Chaitan, the Pavanitan, and the Shabit Gadata, she was a girl back to Inda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. So we're being advised mm -hmm. to, um, over and over and over again, to um, take advantage of the particular, you could say, gifts or that, yeah, you could say gifts that Krishna, that that uh, the devotees have so kindly given us. Um, it, it's Srila Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja just happened recently, and so many devotees, <coughs> they've, they've written their offerings to him. And in so many of those offerings, uh, devotees like to recount the different gifts that Srila Prabhupada gave. He did this, he did that, he did so many things. He gave us deity worship, he gave us prasadam, he gave us books. A lot of that is uh, mentioned if you, if you read throughout the Vyasa Puja book. Uh, and that's you know that's that that is good that devotees are recognizing what Sri Prabhupada uh, painstakingly gave them and what his followers also gave them uh, 
we should never forget the followers also. Um, and, but, but to really, to really take that to heart and really actually take advantage of those things is, uh, sometimes not so easy. Although, I mean, it's easy to say, thank you, Srila Prabhupada, I really appreciate you doing this, or thank you, uh, devotees, I really appreciate you doing this. And then spend most of our time not engaging in those things. Most of our time engaging in whatever social media, Facebook, this, this book, that book, so many other books that have nothing to do with Krishna, more or less. Um, so, because it's a matter of uh, taste, if we do not have taste for these things, although we recognize they're good for us, we won't engage in them because we have taste for other things. Uh, Again, many devotees throughout the world, as the advent of technology has has uh, opered, uh, has opened so many doors, <laughs> many doors to hell, uh, and other doors, many doors. Uh, it has provided an opportunity for devotees to spend their times in so many different ways, and the world to spend their times in so many different ways. Whereas previously, in so many ways, uh, things were limited, actually. So, for example, I mean, just imagine a world without, uh, without, uh, without the internet. Just imagine a world. I mean, what, what would be happening? I mean, people would, it'd be a whole different world. Yeah, you remember that world. <laughs> Some of us don't remember that world. <laughs> It was always like this. A lot more peace of mind. And, um, so, of course, we're not anti this, anti that. I mean, we are anti some things, but things could be used in Krishna service. Uh, sure. Um, but the fact is that so many devotees all throughout the world, they spend a lot of their time um, engaged and looking up whatever health, things about health, things about wealth, <laughs> things about this, things about that. And um, okay, fine, but, but again, it's saying we have to take advantage of the association that we, uh, that we have the opportunity to, to, to get. So, for example, Vaishesh Prabhu, he has a, Apparently now when he's in town up there in ISV, every Wednesday he has a Bhagavatam class in the evening, 6 o'clock. So that's all broadcasted live. Every uh, Saturday morning he's there for two hours in the morning. That's all broadcasted live. Um, and then his, their Sunday fees, this and that. And that's just one temple. There's so many temples who do that all over the world. So... Uh, devotees, especially devotees, uh, any devotees, but devotees should take advantage of those things. If they, w if, they, if they spend their time engaged in so many other ways, they should also take advantage of these opportunities. Um, or else, how will, the, how will we ever make advancement? I mean, we actually won't make advancement if we don't do these things. Uh, especially for those of... Um, you know, like disciples of Vaishesh Kabrabhu and others, I mean, he's so kindly um, making that available, so why not take advantage? Uh, my spiritual master, he has his Japa Sangha, <laughs> Facebook Live, Japa Sangha. So, for devotees who are into these, you know, technology and this and that, then take advantage of that. Uh, he chants Japa live every single morning. He's probably chanting Japa right now, <laughs> live. Um, so these are things, of course, there's the books, um, whether they're on our computer or this pad or that pad, or this device or that device, we take advantage. <coughs> and the scriptures say that if we don't do this, then we're just wasting our human form of life. Um, and we will never ever get free of material desires. We'll never ever really make tangible 
extreme advancement in Krishna consciousness and we won't reach the goal of life. Uh, in other words, we will be always haunted by material desires for you know, millions and trillions of years without taking, uh, without taking advantage of these particular opportunities we're given. Um, and here there's a verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It says, it's from the Madhya Lila, chapter 22, the process of devotional service, text 51. Um, and it says, unless one is favored by a pure devotee, one cannot attain the platform of devotional service. To say nothing of Krishna Bhakti, one cannot even be relieved from the bondage of material existence. So, in order to um, in order to make the advancement that we need to make in in our lives, we have to take advantage of the association of devotees. Uh, we may we may you know decorate our bodies very nicely with tilak. We may you know wear these wonderful kavachas with you know the prayers and rishingadev in them, and we may offer so many you know, prayers to the deities and do so many things, which is all good. It's wonderful. But practically speaking, if we don't take association of the devotees, it says here in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, we'll never get devotional service, we'll never actually obtain devotional service, and we'll never attain the goal. Um, so in other words, we may be doing so many uh, so many things within Krishna consciousness, but if we're not taking advantage of association of pure devotees, then it's going to be very difficult for us to make advancement. Um, <coughs> and sometimes devotees wonder, oh, well, why aren't I making advancement? Well, that's why. Because <laughs> we're not taking association of pure devotees. We're trying to do everything alone, by ourselves. You know, we're praying alone, I mean, what is the power of our prayers, for God's sake? Praying alone, uh, reading alone, eating alone, this alone, that alone, everything alone. And how are we supposed to make an advancement? We just don't make that much advancement. So, Shruti, Smriti, Purana, Adi, Pancharatrik, Vinim, Vina. Uh, this shloka from Rupa Goswami says that we have to follow the Shruti and the Smriti. We have to follow the Vedic literatures. And if, and if, and if someone's not following the Vedic literatures, if they're just speculating things, then it is simply a disturbance in society. So everything we're doing in Krishna consciousness, there's a way to do it, and there's a way not to do it. So there's a way to offer obeisances. There's a way to offer prayers. There's a way to dress oneself. There's a way to speak. There's a way to eat, th th take prasad. There's a way to do so many things everything. And um, there's a way to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> there's uh, certain mantras that we don't chant because they're not coming in the line, authorized disciplic succession, succession the line, they're, they're, they're concocted. So there's so many things that we do that are completely, actually everything, we, we're, we're, we're meant to do everything according to these Vedic literatures. And someone would say, okay, well, that seems kind of boring. I want to use my imagination. <laughs> I want to speculate. I want to, you know, I want to come up with my own things. Okay, fine. Um, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> you try that and see how it works. Rupa Goswami doesn't like that idea, though. He says it's a disturbance. Because where do, where do you draw the line? I have my idea. You have your idea. He has his idea. She has her idea. And then we all just have a bunch of ideas, and then, and then how how are things supposed to go on? Just splinter groups, you know. That's what happens. That's splinter groups means everybody has their different ideas, right? Women gurus that splinter off into the out of the mainstream ISKCON into our women gurus group, for example, whatever, or book anti-editing that splinter off into our group, or Ritvik, you know. Nobody's qualified to be a guru as far as we could see. Let's splinter off. So it could go on and on and on and on and on like that. Let's chant the prayers in English. That sounds better. Let's splinter off. So in 
devotees do that. There's some devotees down in South America who do that. Huh? I was sorry, there's chant Spanish. <laughs> Spanish, Espanol. So, splinter, splinter, splinter. So, okay, fine, then why, why can't we just follow what, you know, the, it's very clear for the most part. <laughs> no, it is clear. Prabhupada made it clear. What the Shrutis, the Smritis, the Vedic literature, everything in essence is clear. So if we follow that, then we'll be successful. And I really like Bhajan Ryan Swami's uh, presentation of the day, slideshow. I, I really like that slide he had of... <laughs> I was going to ask him if he came up with that, but it was the picture of uh, land of, of the, um, we call the landing, where the airplane lands, landing. And it had all the lights there. And, you know, they're all very nicely um, put in a very specific way, specific place. Because if it's, uh, and that's just how, it la how the plane lands. So then he said, oh, well, if I go out there, and, you know, I just say, okay, I want to move it around a little, make a star of David, or, or I don't know, if you're on the other other side of the uh, you're on the other side of the pendulum make a 666 or I'm sorry but or whatever make a smiley face it just doesn't really you can't do that because there's a particular way in which things have been set up to operate successfully so similarly within Krishna consciousness it's like that everything's set up we don't have to we don't have to reinvent the will the will's already been invented we don't have to think about so many things that need to be changed or altered or this or that. Everything's already set. The process is there. So if we follow it, then uh, that makes it a lot easier for us. That we just It's there and we just follow it. It's very simple. Um, so for those who have the tendency to speculate, those that have the tendency to concoct, they should just try to get free of that tendency because it's not really necessary or needed. Um, of course, there's so many innovative ways to preach Krishna consciousness. Maybe they could use their intelligence and their imagination and their, uh, uh, yeah, their tendencies for that. Innovative ways to spread Krishna consciousness. Like somebody thought about the Motel Gita program. It wasn't existing at one point, but somebody thought about it. And it's a it's quite a, you could say, uh, yeah, it's a brilliant idea. Let's put Gita's in all the motels. Uh, Bibles are there. Um, or Shastra Don, or there's different things devotees can have come up with over the years. Um, or, you know, writing books, this, that, so many things. So, uh, so that's the idea that we could use our intelligence, we should use our creativity, but we won't. We can't really use our intelligence and creativity to completely alter things or change things. Which Sri the Prabhupada said that is the tendency, for for whatever reason he said that's the tendency for with Americans. I don't know. <laughs> I guess maybe Indians don't have the tendency or something. I don't know. But he said with Americans. Um, and Prabhupada was very strict about this point. He said. He said. Uh, because the painters, the BBT painters, would come to him. And one person, you can imagine, they, they spent a lot of time. I mean, any, any, ar any artist knows you have to sit there for many hours and like just sit there and paint and make everything nice. And they brought it to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada said, oh, what is this? And in essence, he said this, oh, what is this? And they, oh, Prabhupada, you know, it's a picture of Krishna and whatever, swinging on a tree or something. <laughs> Into the Yamuna, you know, he's got a whatever it was, something like that. Uh, it was a speculated idea. And, uh, and, devotee, and Prabhupada said, oh, well, where is this in my books? And devotee said, oh, well, you know, it's, not really, it's not really there. And, and then Prabhupada said, okay, well, you have to make a new one. Because <laughs> it's not there in his books. It's a, it's a speculative, concoctive thing. So, um, so that's just one example. And there's so many examples of, of Prabhupada not wanting setting up things and just saying this is how it is and and just follow uh, so that is you could say a very good thing for us again because it's it, it's very clear and it uh, we just follow and we'll be successful now it mentions also the Manu Smriti so the Manu Smriti is a 
is an ancient book. And through and among circles of devotees and also among circles of non-devotees, some, some of them really don't like it. In India, I heard there's groups of people who they'll publicly burn it. And they've done that before because it's just, they think it's just too much, just too far. Because some of it's, you could say, from a certain angle of vision, quite intense. You know, like what they do to uh, child abusers, for example. They do some very severe things. Of course, our beloved Bhakti Ryan what uh it was getting into the manusmriti and all these other you know doing all the punishment and all these things and so whatever the case is Srila Prabhupada throughout his books throughout some purports in the Bhagavad Gita he mentions here he's mentioning that he quotes it as as something that should be followed as far as human society is concerned it should follow the manusmriti as well for these laws are given by money now if we as followers of of it, of Srila Prabhupada at as members of ISKCON, if we try to follow certain things in the Manu Smriti, then we'll go to jail. <laughs> because the whole uh, modern society or postmodern society, this, the world in which we're living right now, they're not up to the standard of Manu Smriti. And if we try to institute that within this world, or even within our own society, yeah, we'll go to jail. Um, there was a case, as far as I know, th where a devotee, Prabhupada mentions that there's five different types of offenders. He says, you know, he says it in the Bhagavad Gita, which uh, he says that there's one who you know, steals a person's wife, one who lights a person's house on fire, etc., like that. And it said that a person could, could uh, at least in times before they would they had the right to actually kill that person. So one particular devotee, I guess man, he um he read that and then as lust has it, as this very interesting world has it, not not interesting, degraded in many ways world has it, uh his wife um cheated on him with another man. And then he decided, okay, well, hey, it says it right there in the Bhagavad Gita. Let's, you know, I'm going to take care of this. And then he, and then he uh, killed him, apparently. Anyways, I heard that. I, I don't know who it was. Or, yeah, it happened. So this is called uh, not understanding clearly. Because, okay, this happened in the past. But again, if, if we try to do this within this world or within our society, it's, kind of, it's, just, it's not going to pass. It's not going to go nicely. Um, yeah. It's kind of a, yeah, yeah. So we have to do things, I mean, we have to do things carefully and with common sense. And if, you know, we should probably check with a few devotees before. <laughs> he, he probably should have checked with Prabhupada or somebody before he did that. I mean, he should have. He should have said, oh, well, I'm thinking about. So, anyways. Strange. So, um, but, yeah, there are certain things like that within Manusmriti, and of course, like, again, we can't do them, but Prabhupada does mention them as bona fide, as authentic, as things that could be followed. And there are some things within Manusmriti that we could take, even nowadays, as very instructive for us. So one of those things Srila Prabhupada mentions is um, this idea, which is also not a very popular idea nowadays, but S Prabhupada says, quoting Manusamhiti, that women should not be given independence, but should be given protection by her father, husband, elderly sons. And some time ago, somehow or other, I got a verse similar to this. <laughs> and it was saying that there's certain classes of individuals who have to be protected always. The cows, the Brahmins, the elderly, the women, the children. So, and I was saying how 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 those particular classes they all have their weaknesses the brahmins have their weaknesses the women the cows the children so to to um to say that a particular class of individuals in general have uh weaknesses 
it's not really it's not really immoral it's not really it's not it's not it's not immoral it's not wrong because it's just that's just how it is if i was to say that uh this this flower has a nice scent it's just that's just how it is it's or the microphone amplifies my voice. So similarly, certain classes in general, certain individuals in general, they have weaknesses. So Prabhupada's saying, and Manusmrit is saying, that women in general need in, um, to be given protection. Why? Because <coughs> there's some weakness there on their part, and they may be exploited. And as Sri the Prabhupada I also mentioned before Sri Prabhupada said, oh, what is this women's liberation? He says, you, women's liberation means you, uh, you know, women are free to roam about and some man seduces them, takes advantage of them, exploits them. They enter some relationship of sense gratification. A baby is produced and, and many, many times Abortion happens, but Prabhupada didn't mention it in this case. He said a baby is produced, and th th and then the guy takes off. <laughs> so, it's just so wrong. The guy just takes off, and he goes searches for another woman, or another woman, or another woman. Or another. And then uh, the women's liberation is she becomes dependent on the government for uh, welfare, this and that, for help, because she can't do it by herself. So... The Vedic system is that women at an early age are married before men have an opportunity to take advantage of them, and not just met, not just one man, but so many men have an opportunity to take advantage of them. And in this way, Srila Prabhupada explains that a woman's desire to have a man, to be under the protection of a man, to etc., that desire for uh, that relationship is satisfied at an early age, so her mind is peaceful. It's not always searching. Though, you know. So it's very, you can see how unnatural things are nowadays. So he mentions that. And Srila Prabhupada says that there's, unfortunately, so many rascals are inventing so many ways to be happy. So there's so many ways in which people think they can be happy. This way, that way, so many ways. And generally, all of them have to do with the body and mind. Enjoying the body and mind. <coughs> Like we have this billboard right outside of the Brahmacharya Ashram here. It says it's advertising some can of vodka mixed with orange juice or something. I don't know what it is. And it says, oh, the real thing. This is the real thing. And, you know, you're going to get, which they're indicating you're going to get a real experience here. So there's so many uh, nonsensical things like that produced every day throughout the whole entire world. And people think, oh, you just, you, you'll be happy, you'll be satisfied. But the fact is that over time, people are becoming more and more and more less satisfied. And they are developing issues within their consciousness that are, practically speaking, not being solved. Because they just keep on increasing and no one really knows how to solve them. Just like loneliness, like Bhajanarayan Swami sent something out to do about loneliness. And apparently the millennials of today's world, which I didn't know I was a millennial, I guess I am. Because it said ages 18 to 33 or something, I didn't know I was a millennial. I would always make fun of the millennials. But <laughs> so they said that there's an increasing... Um, epidemic of loneliness and that they feel they have no friends they feel they have no one that cl that's close to them they feel some of them feel they have no acquaintances they have no one who likes them right which is interesting because you get your facebook right everybody type like 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 right oh i like this i like that uh so loneliness and it's it's a miserable thing i mean you're in this you're in this big universe and just you know so many millions of people on the planet billions of people and you're just feeling isolated, you know. Nobody likes me. Nobody loves me. I have no friends. It's just horrible. It's terrible to feel like that. Yeah, you got your cell phone, you know. So, <laughs> so and it's a big problem. Um, so Krishna consciousness will solve that problem because it teaches people how to be humans. 
It teaches people how to be cultured. It teaches people how to be friends. It teaches people how to have friends. And ultimately, it connects one with the supreme friend, Krishna, which if we're connected with Krishna and our spiritual master, we'll never feel lonely because they're always there. We always feel their presence. So that's... Um, we could always turn to Krishna, right? He's the best friend. Suradim Sarvabhutanam. Right? Gatvamam Shantamrichati. And in loneliness, you could say it produces lack of peace and so many other problems. I mean, some philosophers even say that loneliness is the cause of all evil, the root of all evil. I mean, you're just lonely and say, all right, well, I might as well just do something really foolish. I might as well just, like, I don't know, wreck my body or wreck my mind, or I might as well just go, like, be violent with a bunch of people or something. Y you don't really know what to do with yourself. You know, you don't feel loved. So it's a problem. Um, so yeah, Christian consciousness, it solves that. And so many other problems. Every problem, actually. This, the solution to all problems. Um, so the idea is that we want to become educated. We want to realize that it's not just this life. Like I saw some woman at the airport, San Jose airport. She, her boyfriend or whoever picked him up, picked her up, and then she was getting in the car, and on the back of her arm right here, <laughs> it was actually a really ugly tattoo, but on the back of her arm when she was getting in, it's one of the ugliest tattoos I've ever seen in my life. But the lettering of it was just like, like what the font was just ugly, and, and, and each letter was like different colors, and it was just like really bad tattoo, but it said, YOLO, you know, you, you, only, you only live once, you know, and her dog was there and her boyfriend were picking him up. And so Prabhupada criticized this and he said, even big professors and, you know, he said, this is just unintelligent and they're not educated. So he said, there is a next life and just as a boy is educated to enjoy later in his life or to be happy or well situated, so similarly we are educated so we could have an eternal, uh, prosperous life after death and uh, make the human life successful. So, Does anyone have any questions? Or? I saw one devotee, he was in Las Vegas. <laughs> Interesting crowd is out there actually. Interesting crowd of devotees and of course, it's Las Vegas. There's interesting people out there, but devotees are also kind of, and also the newcomers are there, quite interesting people. <laughs> I mean, they're really nice and friendly and everything. This devotee, he, uh, he's been coming to the temple for some time, some months. He's maybe chanting 16 rounds now and reading Prabhupada's books. And he's probably in his early 20s, an American fellow. Maybe he works at a tattoo shop, I'm not sure, but right here on his forehead, he, he got Hari Bull tattooed. <laughs> it said Hari Bull, you know. And I asked, I think I asked, oh, when did you get that? Oh, I got it some recently. I said, okay. The font, the font was, it was a nice font. Yeah, I, I don't know, I'm not so familiar with all the fonts, but it was, it was kind of the one like H and the, it went like this, like, like a, like, like the line looked like a V kind of in the middle. Yeah. All right, ball. So. Or Dharmaraj. Dharmaraj got on the back of his calf. Or Dharmaraj here. Yeah, the boy Dharmaraj. On the back of his calf he got, it says, you are not this body. <laughs> you got a tattoo. <laughs> and then he says, oh yeah, it's a good preaching point. He said, when I'm standing in line somewhere, you know, somebody looks at my leg or some the calf. And, you know, because people are just bored. They're just, okay, they see a tattoo, you're not this body. And they ask him, oh, hey, what does that mean? He's oh, hey, we're the soul, this and that. So. Dharmaraj also got an ISKCON uh, logo right here on the, behind his ear. You didn't see that? Yeah, sometimes with these tattoos, you hope you hope that you don't change your philosophy, right? Or you hope you don't change your, you know, practices or like people get their girlfriend's name or something or their boyfriend's name. Oh, I love, you know, so and so, but then, yeah, forever. But then you got to cross it out. 
my mother got this other guy on the plane too he had a tattoo on the back of his head of his of i think his daughter's daughter's face you know anyways but my mother got a tattoo of our names uh macy and amanda's i think like on her arm or something i'm like right here by her ankle but uh that won't change but she got that many years ago does anyone have any uh comments or no this was like many years ago this was like yeah before we came to the temple she got bronson you know yeah etch it out and put baller on yeah <laughs> all right Okay, Grunter Road, Shumad Bhagavatam, Kija.